Man, wow. Uh, I just want to go back and do some more worship. It's <laughs> good. Good stuff. I have a new Bible tonight. And so I'm, I'm trying to break it in. There we go. And I might need my glasses just so I'm getting old. <laughs> oh. Anybody come expecting tonight to receive something from the Lord? I oh, mean, I can see you. It's amazing. <laughs> We're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you tonight about uh, something that uh, God gave me. I call it a life word. In, In 2009, the Lord spoke this word to me. If you want to just low, run the low mids down on my mic, that'd be okay. All right. Maybe that'll help that. Um, in 2009, the Lord took us from Texas to Alabama. And we had, uh, we, we were broken and, and heartbroken. Because of ministry. We had been so busy in ministry as youth pastors, but the busyness had created a distance between us and God, me and God, and I got hurt, but the Lord is gracious, amen? And the Lord took me to Alabama and got me away from Texas. So he can tell me this word. So I'm going to read it to you. And she's going to translate. <laughs> it's in Jeremiah chapter 23. Starting in verse 18. And it says this. Let me wait for you. Okay. All right. Awesome. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days you will understand it clearly. For I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, if they had met with me, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. That's 18 through 22. Okay. But if you want to skip, just read 18 and then start with 21. Okay. Mas qual deles esteve no conselho do Senhor para ver ou ouvir a sua palavra? Quem deu atenção e obedeceu a minha palavra? Eu vou versículo 21. Não enviei esses profetas, mas eles foram correndo para levar a sua mensagem. Não falei com eles, mas eles profetizaram. So, God's making it real clear to Jeremiah. Então Deus está fazendo claro para Jeremias. That there was a lot of quote unquote men of God that he did not send they're not speaking his words they're, they're speaking their own but God said if they would have stopped and met with me I would have given them my words and my words would have brought life and deliverance to the people. Amen. Amen. 
That word in the original Hebrew word literally is translated rhema. Rhema is the spoken word of God. Our Bible is the Logos word of God. Understand? Okay. So we have the written word of God. And then there's the spoken word of God. So what I want to talk to you about today is meeting with God. And how important meeting with God is. See, we look through the Bible and we see examples of men meeting with God all, the, all through the Bible. In Genesis 22, Abraham met with God on the mountain at the place of sacrifice where God had asked him to take and sacrifice his son. In Genesis 32, Jacob met with God and they wrestled all night. In Exodus chapter 3, Moses met with God on Mount Sinai where he met God in a burning bush. <laughs> Abush. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> God wants to meet with his people. And that, that meeting place that we have with him brings all sorts of fruit in our life. Jesus also shows us this as well. It's no different than the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus continues to show us that he wants to meet, that we, that we, that we should meet with God. Amen. Amen. In Matthew chapter 3, Jesus has an encounter with God for the first time in his ministry. And he was baptized. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon him and God, Ramos, Rama, <laughs> Rama, this is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. That Rama God spoke changed the world forever. In that moment, that was when it started. And Jesus began to do great signs and wonders. Amen. That's where it started for all of us. In a meeting. In the water. Where Jesus was baptized. In Matthew 17. Jesus goes up to the mountain. And once again meets with God. And he's transfigured. Transfigured. That's good. I love this. <laughs> Then another word came from God. Another rhema came from God. And when God spoke, it knocked the disciples to the ground. Rhema is powerful. In Matthew 26, Jesus again meets with God. In the Garden of Gethsemane. And he had a conversation with his father. And from that meeting, Jesus was crucified. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus tells the disciples, To go and wait for the uh, wait for the promised one in the upper room in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. 
That, what were they waiting for? A meeting. With the Holy Spirit. And they waited. They didn't go anywhere. Because Jesus told them to wait. For the meeting. The meeting's important. And we see in Acts chapter 2, the Spirit of God shows up at the meeting and much like Moses encountered God at the burning bush, and, uh, as one, one of you say it twice. <laughs> the fire of God rested on their heads. The Bible says like tongues of fire. Picture that for a minute. Look above your heads. Where's the fire? It's inside of us now, right? Move from here to here, right? Hallelujah. But from that meeting, 3,000 people gave their heart to Jesus. See, meetings are important. <laughs> When we make meeting with God a lifestyle, we have a lot of people today in America that come to church on Sundays. And that's the only meeting they have. And they're more observationists rather than participants. They come to watch the meeting. Not participate. But God wants you to meet with Him. Tonight we're meeting with God. And you can choose to participate or watch. But change happens when you participate in the meeting. Not when you watch. What happens when you go to church and watch the meetings? You have a religion and not a relationship. Nowhere in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelations, did God ever tell us He wants a religion? From the very beginning, it was about a relationship. It's in those meetings that the relationship grows. I'm going to give you five things about the meeting that will happen in the meeting. If you will participate, not just on a Sunday, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Number one, faith arises. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 says faith is the substance of things hoped for without the evidence that it ever existed. Amen? Right? Amen. That's, what faith, that's what Hebrews 11 tells us faith is. Romans chapter 10, Romanos, 12, verse 17, says that faith, that substance. So remember, I'm sorry, I'm, faith is a substance. Diz que fé é uma substância. You understand? Yes. Yes. It's a substance of things hoped for. <laughs> But Romans 10, 17 Mas 10, 17, tells us faith comes 
By hearing. And hearing through the word of God. Now watch this. Again. The word of God in the Greek. In this in, in Romans 10, 17. Is the word Rama. So if we understand, it's not Logos. I grew up being taught that faith comes by hearing this read. The Word of God. The Logos Word. And it's true. If you read this to yourself, your faith might might. If you understand it, it might grow. But Romans 10, 17 said it's the spoken word of God that brings our faith. Amen? So when we meet with God, when we clear our schedule, we push the world out And hear the Rama word of God. Our faith grows. Anybody ever heard God's voice? Did you just want to like jump on something and be like, yeah, he spoke to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because we read our Bible. It's just so good. Thank you, God. He wrote it for us. But when you're sitting there in those intimate moments of meeting with him, and he speaks to you. Yeah. It's different. It, It comes alive. That God would speak to me. Wow. I've been learning to read Braille. Braille? You understand Braille for blind? Yeah. Braille. And you can really feel it. They'll get the joke later. <laughs> I can feel it. It's okay. I tried. Oh, God's good. <laughs> Where did my notes go? I'll go back to my notes. Faith arises when the rhema word of God is spoken in our lives. God spoke to me about some people tonight. Mm. And later I'm going to tell you. Watch your faith change. Mm. So faith arises. Now watch this. When Abraham took his son Isaac, it was to the place of sacrifice. Many people wonder why God doesn't, they can't hear God. What is your sacrifice? What are you willing to put on the altar to meet with God? Abraham was willing to put his son on the altar. Because God spoke. What are you willing to put on the altar? Some of us need to have a meeting with God at the place of sacrifice. Some of, us, some of us have stuff in our life we need to get rid of, we need to sacrifice and get out of our life so that we can hear God. 
para ouvir a Deus. If we're not willing to sacrifice Se nós não our pride, o nosso orgulho, if we're not willing to sacrifice our reputation, nossa if we're not willing to surrender everything, e tudo, don't bother going to the meeting. Nem vai para o the Bible says he is a jealous God. A fala que Deus tem de nós. And he wants all of you. E que ele quer todo, toda a parte de você. He doesn't want just a portion of your heart. Ele não quer só um do seu he wants your whole heart. Ele quer seu you might have to sacrifice some things that you think are important to you to hear the rhema word of God. Para ouvir a rhema de Deus. Amen. 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 Number two. Dois. Transformation happens in the meetings. A lot of people think they got to come to church and come down to the altar and let a man put his hands on them for a transformation to happen. I want to tell you something today. The biggest transformation in your life will happen in the secret place. The biggest transformation in your life will happen when you meet with God by yourself. In Genesis 32, Jacob wasn't at church. He wasn't at the temple. He went after God. He wanted a meeting with God. I think he was just sick and tired of being Jacob. And he, he, wanted, he wanted transformation in his life. And the Bible says that Jacob grabbed a hold of God. They wrestled all night. And he wouldn't let him go. And the sun started coming up. And God said, turn loose them. Let go of me. And Jacob said, no. He held on. He said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. A pastor did not have to beg Jacob to come to an altar. If Jacob had been at a church, he would have ran to the altar. That's how desperate he was. See, Jacob, his name was, Jacob meant thief and deceiver. Remember he stole his brother, he stole the, the blessing? He's a thief and a deceiver. He didn't want to be. He knew it was wrong. And he, got, he had enough. So he went after God and he grabbed a hold of him. He said, I'm not letting go until you change who I am. And finally, God touched the hip of Jacob. Right? The Bible said he walked differently. Anybody ever wish you could walk differently? Amen. Amen. He walked differently for the rest of his life. But watch what happened in the meeting place. He changed his name to Israel. God's children. The promise fulfilled. From one meeting with God, the promise to Abraham was fulfilled. And the children of God were born. Meetings are important. Peter. Anybody, uh, anybody, uh, how you say it, uh, relate to Peter? Relate? Yeah. 
Remember, Peter was a fisherman. Pedro era um pescador. And he was a he was a wuss. I'm just, can, how do you translate that? He was weak. E ele era fraco. He was. He was a coward. Ele era um well, how do you say, oh, that's St. Peter. <laughs> Read the Bible. When they were beating Jesus, when they were tearing the flesh from his body, a little girl walked up to Peter. Aren't you one of his disciples? No, no, no. no I don't know him. I'm not one of them. Coward. Scared. Again, another person came up while they're beating his Savior. Remember, Peter said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Messiah. Peter knew who he was. But when they're beating him, and another person comes up and says, aren't you one of his disciples? No, no. Mm, mm, mm. Scaredy cat. Again, a third time. And Peter got upset. No, I don't know him. Denied Jesus three times. Anybody ever denied Jesus? With your choices, with your actions. Come on, if you're not raising your hand, you're lying right now. Come on, we've all made the wrong choices. We've all chose sin over Jesus. But what happened to Peter? Peter went to a meeting in Jerusalem where the Holy Ghost showed up as fire on top of his head. The next time we see Peter, the scaredy cat, he's standing up in front of thousands of people full of boldness and declaring that the prophet Joel said. And what happened? 3,000 people got saved because he had a meeting. Meetings are important. You ever want to do something just like, man, you say, God, use me. Jesus, I want to, I want to be used by you. When was the last time you cleared your calendar and had a meeting with him? Was it last Sunday? Don't, don't, don't hide your toes. I'm going to step on them tonight. <laughs> oh, transformation happens in the place of the meetings. When we get on our face. And we cry out to God. When we ask the Holy Spirit to change us, grow us, lead us. So when we begin to sacrifice our wants and desires and surrender faith comes transformation comes the third thing Is anybody getting anything from this? Amen. The meeting place is where we encounter the glory and fire of God. And that shouldn't scare you. Listen, Moses in Exodus chapter 3. 
walked up onto a mountain. Ele foi para, ele subiu a montanha. And there was a bush on fire. <laughs> You're going to get it before the end of the night. Busco? Abusto? Abusto. On fire. And the Bible says, when God saw Moses coming, he spoke. Rama came from the bush, the burning bush. And he told Moses to take his sandals off. That's important. Sandals represented something very important in their culture. Yesterday, Pastor Gio, during the wedding ceremony for Rafa and Chelsea, put new sandals on their feet. Symbolic of a new journey, new path together. Amen? Amen. God told Moses take his sandals off. Sandals represented a lot of things in the Old Testament. One of the things they represented was your level of faith. I didn't know that either. Until I studied it. <laughs> it represented the level of faith, what your beliefs were. God told him to take his off. Remember, Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh. He was a Hebrew, an Israelite, but he was raised under different beliefs. God told him, get rid of those beliefs. You're standing on holy ground now. What was special about the ground? Just dirt. It was just dirt. What was special about it? The presence of God. Listen, we serve a God that will turn the dirt holy. When God shows up, it becomes holy. When you encounter the presence of God and you're heart is surrendered. He makes everything in your life holy. Because He's there. The fire of God, the Bible says, is an all-consuming fire. All you got to do is be willing to walk into the meeting. God will take care of the rest. The Holy Spirit will take care of the rest. Mm. Number four. <laughs> if you've made it to number four, the meeting brings freedom. Peter prophesied in Acts chapter 2, repeating what the prophet Joel said, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Nobody is the exception. No matter what we've done in our life, no matter the choices we've made, these ladies that you saw dance, they are here because of choices they made. It's what most people would think. But they came to a meeting. If you knew their stories, and if we have time, you might get to hear one or two. You will understand what I mean 
By freedom. Mm. When we meet with God, through the Holy Spirit, my handwriting is a little bit bad right here. (laughs) He gives rhema through men of God, but also will speak right to you. And when he talks to somebody who has a arrest record longer than your body, who is supposed to be in prison today because of old choices, but when he whispers in their ear, I love you. You don't have to live that way. You are clean. You are free. I died for your sins. My grace is sufficient. Then you have Lindsay, who's standing here with us today. Hmm. It brings freedom. 